I welcome everybody to the April 10th, 2022 Justice Coalition class and meeting. We are talking about agitating for action. Let's get started. We'll go right to the agenda. You all uh, have access to that in the links as well. We always want to thank uh, Brother uh, Cody Mazzarella here in Chicago. He's an activist. He lets us use his premium Zoom account. Uh, you'll hear us talking about union democracy and revolutionary unionism. This is a phrase that's inspired by the industrial workers of the uh, world. And it is to take power from our employer and the politicians through direct action at work and democratically control our unions. By doing so, we can dismantle the service and transactional model of business unionism that has neutralized our power for over 50 years. Um, on the agenda, we also list our website. We have a Google calendar. I highly recommend you subscribe to that Google calendar. All of you on this call, all of you listening. Uh, not only do we have reminders on the calendar for uh, our events, but we have uh, e calendar, um, Oops. calendar events for uh, local 241 and uh, local 308. So uh, here, for example, here it is. Here's the Justice Coalition calendar that you can subscribe to. And there, there's the local 308 membership meeting. Last week, you have uh, uh, when we went to go uh, show support for Brother Sylvester, you have the local 241 membership. And when you subscribe to this calendar, you will get reminders on your email uh, or your phone about the event leading up to and during the event. So uh, this is some modern technology we should take advantage of. Please take advantage of it. YouTube, we're Twitter, Facebook, all that good stuff. So uh, everything begins with the foundation. The foundation is our history. Let's talk about, or let's learn about the uh, one of the uh, big tragic events in labor history in 1911. Seems like a long time ago, but really wasn't. So let me make sure I get my, share the sound here. I want y'all to check this out. It's not long, it's only about uh, two minutes. I'm Rick Smith, and this is Labor History in Two. On this day in labor history, the year was 1911, marking one of the most tragic days in US labor history. 146 women and girls died in the Triangle Shirtwaist Factory fire. The Triangle Factory was owned by Max Blanc and Isaac Harris. They ran the sweatshop on the 8th and 9th floor of a building in Manhattan. Most of their employees were young Italian and Jewish European immigrant workers who did not speak English. The Triangle owners disregarded safety precautions and even went so far as to lock their employees in the building during the day. On that fateful Saturday, the workday was drawing to a close and the women were preparing to leave. A fire broke out in a rag bin and spread quickly. The women ran to the stairway, only to find the doors blocked and locked. Tragically, only one elevator was working. Firefighters arrived on the scene, but their ladders and hoses were too short to reach the women. One survivor, Celia Walker Friedman, recalled the horror of the fire. The door to the stairway was completely blocked by big crates of blouses and goods. She escaped by sliding down an elevator cable. Desperate women tried to jump down the elevator's shaft and out the windows. Horrified onlookers watched as these women fell to their deaths. In the aftermath of the fire, the International Lady Garment Workers Union organized an official day of mourning. A march to honor the dead and demand changes in the industry drew 80,000 to the streets of New York. The owners faced criminal charges, but were not convicted. They settled civil suits, paying only $75 for each woman who died. The fire became a rallying call for union organizing and workplace safety. Labor History in Two brought to you by the Illinois Labor History Society and The Rick Smith Show. For more information, go to laborhistoryin2.com, like us on Facebook, and follow us on the Twitters at Labor History in Two. 
All right. Get that radio voice. So um, I would like to hear what you all thought of that. Um, is there anything in that narration of history that um, enlightened you about what we're going through now here in Chicago and beyond even? What, uh, go ahead and uh, unmute yourself and share with us your thoughts about this event in history. Is that Kathy? Yeah, hi. Talk, talk to us. Okay, well, yeah, for sure. It was a, it's a very historic, important event, but the bosses are kind of the same way now. They don't care about workers. All they care about is making money. And if people die and people do die on jobs today, they don't get uh, any kind of, it's, it's not illegal. So, or maybe, maybe some things are illegal, but nothing ever happens to change it. That's why I believe in revolution. We gotta get rid of capitalism because all, all it cares about is uh, it's profit over people. Thank you. And any anybody else wanted to say something about this uh, triangle shirtways factory fire thoughts that came to your mind, like how Kathy described or anything else? So yeah, I got I got something. Oh, um, Eric, go ahead. This is this is uh, the, the 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 founder of our newsletter finally got the news. Uh, Co-organizer Eric Strzok. Uh <laughs> Go ahead, brother. Thanks, Shane. Um, uh, somebody, uh, somebody I was talking to online just brought up uh, the uh, the Bhopal Union Carbide disaster in uh, I think it was 1986, 85 or 86. Um, it was a chemical plant in um, in Bhopal, India, run by a U.S. company called Union Carbide. This uh, not so not only what Kathy was talking about is is there you know, uh, this class of bosses, bosses and owners and stuff that, uh, that doesn't care whether or not uh, workers die. This is an international system. And um, so it was American bosses, American corporations in India that through negligence and not keeping up with uh, safety standards, um, this disaster happened at this factory and it killed 14,000 people. And nobody in the U.S. was prosecuted for it. It just happened. Bosses in the U.S. didn't have to pay a dime, and they just shrugged their shoulders and walked away from it. You know, so this is this is a whole international system where, uh, uh, you know, Marxists refer to it as imperialism, where um, you know the the large corporations in in the big developed countries like uh, like the U.S., Germany, Japan, and England and stuff. They they make all these high dollar investments in other countries and, and, and extract these super profits and the conditions for workers over there are even worse. So we got a double responsibility to fight them over here uh, to, you know, keep pressure off of other working class people uh, in other countries. You know what I mean? And thanks, Eric. Yeah, and I brought up uh, on the screen, I brought up a little article about Bhopal. Um, and <laughs> We, we really cannot let our think that we are exceptional at the CTA. Everyone wants to tell you, not everyone, but a lot of people will tell you, oh, it's just a different kind of company. Oh, it's, that's just, it's, just, it's, it's a different kind of union. This is, it's just how things, no, this is how things are everywhere. <laughs> so when you, when you realize that, then, you find that you have something in common with people down the block on the other side of the world. And this is where the whole concept of mass strike, general strike came from. We have to think about that, profits over people. It's always about that at our safety, right? At the CTA. Anybody else want to comment? Or if Eric, you want to follow up, we'll move on. If not, okay. So again, history is really important, y'all. Let's let's study it. Let's read it. Uh, let's go into our organizing session. 
Sorry, we have a uh, little noise here. If you can't Ooh, hear hey, me. Hey, I got, I, got, I got one thing I wanted to say real quick. Yeah, um, yeah I just wanted to give people a heads up um, that uh, that successful action that we had in the absolute worst weather last weekend um, at uh, 67th and South Shore. I actually wrote an article about that for um, a newspaper that I write for sometimes. Um, it got published and it's available online at... Uh, fightbacknews.org fightbacknews.org so check it out and get a chance uh there it is thanks yeah um and actually this is on our agenda to discuss um so i'm hoping you'd be able to stay around eric will you where do you have another place to go no i'm in it to win it today man oh good good because I, I want you to um talk about this when we get to it please um all right, so here we go. We're talking about organizing, right? All right. Let's continue where we left off last week. This is a book called Secrets of a Successful Organizer by Labor Notes. So it's real, real critical in order to be successful, uh, we have to talk with one another. Conversation. What is our conversation? We discover the issues and we uh, uh, begin to try to do something about it. But the only way we can, once we start the conversation, we have to say, okay, what are we gonna, what are we gonna do about this? So we left off with, you know, how things going? How, how about the job? You know, there's, there's ways to break in and then just start listening. So we wanna react to what people tell us and then follow up. And by reacting, you can help the other person feel they have permission to be angry. And that's what I notice when I talk with coworkers. It's, it's something, oh, it's just the way it is. Oh, it's just, yeah, but they, they, but you don't, you think that's right that, you know, you're being punished uh, for being sick at work and, um, you know, no, no, yeah, yeah. So I, I, how does that make you really feel? How long has that been going on? Is that, oh, that's a question I ask a lot of people. Is that okay with you? Is it okay that you're paid less to do the same job as someone else? How are you coping with this? How do you deal with this? How's this affecting your family? We have to care about each other. Start caring about yourself. Care about your coworkers, because these are your family. We're, we got a family, yeah, a lot of, some of us have a family, we go home, we have a family, but we spend a lot of our days with people who, who are not in our direct family, right? But they're like family. The next step is to lay the blame, all right? So we, we, we agitate, we, we try to get them to talk, express themselves, and then we want to say, well, why do you think this is going on? Who, is the, who do you think is in the position to fix it? And suddenly, sometimes they know stuff. And they say, well, I know so-and-so and such and such. What would they have to do in order to fix it? And another one that really works is when you say, so is this, is this problem just going to solve itself? You, you think so? And they'll be like, no. Nah. <laughs> Nobody really says, oh, yeah, it's going to solve itself. Just wait. The only people saying that are, are typically the elected union leadership. Yeah, yeah, don't worry, I'll take care of it. You'll get back to me later. <laughs> Just vote for me. <laughs> It'll be fixed, I promise. Um, many times we feel our problems are just the way things are. Realizing that bad conditions didn't fall from the sky can be empowering. If someone made the decision that caused this mess, that someone could also unmake it. So the next step is to make a plan to win. Now that your coworker is angry, it's time to offer some hope. Let me just check my agenda, make sure I followed that. Yeah, I don't wanna to go too far ahead. Now that your coworker is angry, it's time to offer some hope. Hope comes from your power in numbers and a winnable plan. That's how you make your problem into a problem for the decision maker. Real key here, y'all. 
So some examples, most people want, this was an example, most people want to go back to the old schedule. The supervisor hasn't listened, but what if 25 of us signed this petition and we all march into the office together to deliver it? So we had a problem on the rail. Uh, we've had lots of problems, right? But for example, I remember uh, train operators were having issues with this, this ridiculous certification, recertification program. And, uh, you know, coworker reached out, she made a petition, you know, and she, she, she believed the union president would be the one to solve it. So she, I helped her make the petition. She got, we got signatures, I helped her out. She gave it to the union president. And uh, I guess something happened. Um, does anyone have any examples of um, some, a, a plan to win? Something that you did with coworkers um, for a plan. Yeah, do you remember, uh, uh, man, probably about six years ago or something when 308 was going to take a strike vote? You remember that? Yeah, I remember uh, seeing that in the news. I remember, uh, so uh, so Keith, Keith Hill had just gotten in in 241. And um, I didn't I didn't really know what was going on in 308, but I heard about that they were going to take a strike vote. And I think that was when Franklin was in. Um, yeah. And I was looking at that. I'm like, man, if we don't if we don't have a plan to like back up our uh, our sisters and brothers in 308, then they're just going to use 241 and the bus operations people to scab on a 308 strike. Because yeah. the first thing, if the trains, if the trains strike, dude, the first thing they're going to do is they're going to have buses at every stop. Yep. You know what I mean? And yep. I'm like, dude, we're in the same, we're in the same union. That can't happen. So I had a petition to, to Keith and them talking about, um, you know, you have to pledge to, uh, to not allow 241 to be used as scabs against our, our sister local 308. You know what I mean? And so I got about maybe, I think it was like, almost 80 signatures, somewhere between 60 to 80 signatures. And I went to a, uh, a mass meeting. This is back when we were meeting at, uh, what's that other union hall? I think it was SCIU or something over by uh, hmm. Cermak and Halstead. Hmm. So all the way down there. And um, he wouldn't let me up. Uh, he wouldn't let me bring it up during the meeting. So I actually went up to him after the meeting and I tried to hand him the petition and he literally turned his back on me. Oh my God. Yeah, he hasn't changed in six years. <laughs> go ahead, Tom. Tom, go Angelo. Yeah, I want to say something about that 308 strike vote. That was just for a campaign for Ken Franklin to win again. When the CTA knows 241 has the most members, 308 is just a puppet to them. So they don't even bother with them. Yeah. Uh, go ahead, Kathy. Yeah, it's well, it's absolutely true that Ken Franklin used that uh, strike vote for his campaign and Deborah Cozy Lane. But the only reason we took the strike vote is because a few of us made a motion at the meeting at a big meeting, the same meeting where we voted not to renew the second chance program, then there was a motion to have a strike vote and people voted to, yeah, we're going to do that. And then that, oh, I want to say the F word, that <laughs> Ken Franklin, he changed it to be a pre-strike vote or some shit. We took the, the vote, it was in January something like that. We gave them six months to build for this. We still trusted him. We gave him six months months to build for the strike. He didn't do shit until the last couple of weeks for his campaign. So, you know, that was an instance where, where the, the members did get something accomplished, but only the beginning. And then we kind of got stuck. But a lot of people came out to vote for it. Yes. Yes. And see, it, all of this is rank and file. Nothing that you all described just now is was an official, official 
doing stuff. It was the members, the workers, and that's what we have to emphasize. And, and please don't let the failures be a reason not to organize because we learn from our mistakes and we should always build upon our failures. Go ahead, uh, uh, Tom and then Andre. Uh, unmute yourself, Tom. Okay. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yeah, CTA is doing the same thing that the Pace Suburban Bus does. Different unions, they divide it and conquer it. We should be in one local. We negotiate together. I mean, it's just crazy. There's, they know 241 has the most of the power in the negotiations. We're the bigger local. We should be one local. That's my opinion. Thank you. Go ahead, Andre. Well, with that local issue being one local, they have to go through the international with the delegates and stuff and have to be brought up in the meeting, just like you would change the bylaw. So that's a that's a whole different uh, venue. But files with these strike votes, when it, the members could tell, should be able to understand when strike votes take place by one local and not by another local you know, in the same union, 241 and 308. It's nothing but a smoke and mirror move. Uh, just pay attention. When you have a strike vote, it should be actions behind them strike votes. So when you have a strike vote and the members and, and between the, and, and the presidents of the locals don't come together and take action as such as an example is when Tom had his uh, movements, you know, we didn't have that. We didn't have a strike vote because we was leading up to a strike. We had several movements, you know, where hundreds of members was coming out to put to for call for action at 95th downtown. We was at we had a rally downtown where they was negotiating our contract and all these things was taking place. We was having several rallies on a regular basis. And the biggest rally was at 95th and it's still historical pictures of that. And then Keith got in and killed the whole movement. So the members need to understand and pay attention to these type of behaviors uh, of union leaders that inactive, that won't do anything, that won't take their members and mobilize them. Then you also, it shows you have a fake leader such as Keith, you, you know, he had these fake rallies on the same day that the Justice Coalition have their rallies instead of trying to come together and let's have a rally together because we're about the members. But, you know, once he have his one rally, then that's the end of that. So right. the members should yeah. be able to recognize these type of behaviors from leaders that's not in their corner. And we just need to take control and take charge of local 241 and local 308 because we're together anyway. You know, we're together. The members have to understand that and just come together. There's no law that said that we can't shake each other's hands. There's no law that said we can't talk to each other. There's no law that said we can't rally and protest together. And that's what we Thank need you. to do. They make a big effort to keep us separate in mind. Thank you. Yes, that's the truth. And it's really important that we talk with each other, whether you're on the bus or the rail, you're in the same terminal, you're a different shop, garage, talk with each other. Look at these examples in here, how to talk with each other and stimulate the discussion. And we have to lay the blame. The blame is not on your coworkers. Please stop it. That is a tactic used by our employer and enforced by corrupt union leadership to blame us for the hazards. Our, our brother Sylvester made a horrible, horrible mistake. He, made, he, he had a lapse in judgment, but he had been abused like many other coworkers over and over with no help. No, no, anything. And he snapped and, and, and basically attempted to murder somebody. Okay. And now he's going to probably be in jail for life, but he's wrong for doing that. But where do you lay the blame? Talk to each other about who's responsible for the working conditions. It's our employer. And why do you think we're having this problem? Do you think it will correct itself? And who is in the position to fix it? And that's where we direct our actions. And when we make our plan, we keep it in that direction. 
Uh, let's wrap it up on this section. Go ahead, Tom. Uh, I did that by accident. Oh, okay, no problem. Um, so let me close out this section here. So let's talk about uh, last week. Uh, we had the uh, CTA workers uh, fight back protest. Uh, let's go through, uh, everyone's gonna get a chance to speak, um, whether you were there or not. Um, we're gonna, I'm gonna go down the list and uh, go ahead, uh, Andre. What, what do you think? Was it a success? Well, yeah, I think it was a successful thing. Uh, a lot of the female operators, they don't agree with the part of parties. They don't want to use the part of parties. So uh, uh, we need to continue to bring this effort up. We need to can pass this article out as much as we can. A lot of people like uh, picking up the article. I was working yesterday and I made a, mis I made a mistake and left a stack in, on my windshield by my, win by my window. And so I was driving and as I was driving, the cuffing was just picking it up and taking it and reading it. And I was like, oh, that's a, I didn't even think about that, you know? Oops. And they was actually reading it, you know? They was getting off at Hat Park and taking it with them. So I was like, hey, this is cool. They took all the whole stack, you know? People was taking them because they saw something that says CTA. They catch the CTA, bathrooms, fit for humans. I mean, it's a catching, it's a catching uh, title. So you can't help but to want to read something like that. And then another thing that took place uh, the union official, when I was passing it out, he, Clarence Covington from 103rd, he told a lie. Well, it's not, not nothing new, of course, but it shocked me that he told the lie. He said, this was his idea, and why don't I have an original idea? And I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> now, you got to remember, this is the union person that's supposed to understand his parameters <laughs> as he do his job. He called it an idea. It's never an idea. It's an issue. <laughs> it's an issue that carries on or that take place in whatever time or realm it's in. And it's the issue that we was bringing up and that the members was embracing. But he said it was an idea that, that, that I stole. I should have my original idea. And he said it was his idea. And I told him, well, okay, you should come out and deal with your idea next time we have a rally. So I thought that was strange. But he really was talking about when Tom brought it up. He was the steward. I was the executive board. And we was on the road with these porta parties. And the CTA was in the midst of building bathrooms. But of course, Keith won and then they had to do nothing. So he don't understand what's the difference between an idea and an issue. And it always should be about the issue. Always. It's always about the member's issue. It's never about a certain idea if the people don't embrace the idea and don't think it's an issue. This bathroom is a serious working condition issue. Thank you. Thank you. And so at the uh, agenda, which is available at chicagotransitworker.com, uh, go to CTJC meetings and just click right on today's date for our meeting. We have a link for the uh, flyers that you can download. The website, printing from the website is a little wonky. So what I did is we repurposed the article and uh, just made a, a, a easy to print uh, article with the link uh, in, in uh, Brother Eric and Fight Back News um, and FRSO, make sure everyone got credit and you can print it from there. And if you don't wanna print or you can't print, uh, let me know or let us know at the Justice Coalition. We'll try to get a stack to you. Um, let's go to Tom. Tom, uh, what do you think? Uh, was this a success or what could have been done better? Well, it was very successful. Uh, I didn't come out because it was raining and cold, but uh, <laughs> that's okay. Up at, up at Forest Glen after you guys did that. Because we have several porta potties along our routes, they came and swapped them out with the ones with the water in it. Now, so you're gonna wash your hands and everything. Yeah, yeah, isn't that nice? That was really cool. <laughs> but on one of our routes is a porta potty at Cumberland in the middle of the forest preserves. Yeah, and on our 
Forrest Glenn page, the old timers are saying, well, you should be lucky it's there. We used to have to go in the creek and this and that. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, well, shouldn't we have a regular facility? But yeah. you know, yeah. that's the old timers saying that. Yeah. But that route there has no permanent bathrooms on the terminals owned by CTA. It's a porter potty at Cumberland. And then on the east end at Broadway, you have to run into the gas station. And, and after 8.30 at night, the bus don't go to Cumberland. It goes to Harlem at the mall there. And that mall closes. You have nowhere to go. Yep. Their suggestion is, oh, we'll take the bus to Addison in Cumberland because there's a CTA washroom there. So I told the executive board, well, how come you don't fight to change the terminal from Irving in Cumberland to Addison in Cumberland? Oh, well, it's too small for all them buses. They come up with every excuse. Yeah, it's always an excuse. We don't have enough money. I mean, what is a life worth to these people? You know, the life that we give in service to the city of Chicago. You know, then, then they want to pit 308 against us with the washrooms. Oh, well, the 308 don't let you go into the terminal uh, at the red line or wherever. I've never had a trouble. They've always let me in. Yeah, I when I was a customer assistant, yeah. I always obliged. That's how I found out that you had bathrooms right in those booths there. I didn't know that. Some of them, yeah. Some of them do. Some of them don't. But yes, that's correct. Um, hey, Andre, just uh, hang on. We'll get right to you. I just, I just want to go down the list so everyone has a chance to talk. Uh, uh, Eric, Eric, uh, tell us what do you think? Uh, you, you, you wrote this beautiful article for us, uh, for 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 the people. But uh, what do you think? Be honest. What what could have been better? Man, first of all, I just want to thank you guys so much, uh, especially Andre for making copies and actually handing this out to people. That's really outstanding, man. Thank you so much for doing that, brother. Um, yeah, uh, I thought it was great, man. And the thing is, we had, we, I mean, it was kind of, it wasn't like a big demonstration, but the thing is, though, is you got to do special math with that because if we have 10 or 12 people showing up on a day when it's like 40 degrees and pouring rain, that's equal to 30 or 50 people showing up on a nice sunny day. You know what I mean? So we had, and we had a bunch of new faces. And the other great thing about this demonstration was this was, wasn't something that, that, that brother Eric came up with or brother Andre came up with. This came, this was some people that, that uh, if I'm not mistaken, this is some people that, uh, that we knew through Justice Coalition work that had proposed this as an idea. And you guys were like, yeah, let's do it. So this is like some independent initiative among regular, you know, 241 people. You know what I mean? Which is, yes. this is exactly, this is what we've been working towards. Yes. Even though we didn't get a ton of people to show up, this is, this is the beginning of exactly what we want to see happening, which is the rank and file in the union locals sensing their own power and taking the initiative by themselves. And the other thing, the other point I wanted to make is that, um, is that working class people and oppressed people don't have their own press. The Sun-Times and the Tribune, those are the bosses' papers, right? Um, yep. Fight Back News and also yep. Kathy's organization, uh, Progressive Labor Party, they got a paper called uh, The Challenge. Those are our newspapers. This is where working class people can talk about what they want to talk about. So anytime any, any of you all that want to bring an issue up or write something, get in touch with me or get in touch with Kathy. We'll publish it. Thank you. Thank you. And I'll, I'll put, uh, put some links. Also, uh, IWW as well. Uh, has a lot of resources and um, his progressive labor party um, fight back news. And I want to let everyone know that don't let these, these words like uh, uh, socialist or Marxist or communist scare you. The history of unions fighting back and being organized by workers was done by people who were of these different uh, extractions uh, these these ideas and these concepts. So to, to, to deny that is to deny our own very history, uh, our own revolutionary history as workers. Um, let's go to uh, Kathy. Uh, what, what do you think, Kathy? Uh, give us, uh, do you think, uh, uh, 
the protest was a success. What could we have done better? Um, Oh, yeah, it definitely was a success. Like like what the other Eric said about uh, people coming out in the rain and it was cold. Uh, that was really uh, kind of impressive. That was a that might have been our biggest crowd yet uh, yeah. for for a rally. So that was really good. And we handed out flyers before the rally and everybody was very supportive. So it was the right issue. And uh, thanks to Tina for, uh, you know, leading the way on that. So yeah, it was a good success. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Robert, Robert, what, what did you think about the protest? Uh, you were there, um, but uh, what, do you, what did you like about it? What needed to be better? Well, I think that uh, given the weather circumstances, it was great. Um, you know, this was a great idea on Tina's part. Um, it's a shame that we got a female manager that doesn't want to do anything uh, to fix this situation. Um, but I think it was great. Uh, I think the people enjoyed the signs. Uh, I tried to make some signs that would be relatable. Um, and uh, actually, I forgot one of the signs and I was doing one of my routes the other day and I passed and I was like, oh man, my sign is still there. <laughs> so I gotta, <laughs> I gotta go back and get my sign. So, uh, yeah, but I think it was great. I, uh, we need to do more. Uh, I had bought a new, a, a new bullhorn that I didn't get to use cause it was raining and stuff, but I'll bring it out for the next meeting. That's all I got to say. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks for everything you do, brother. Uh, Andre, go ahead. Yep, I think the rally was, I think the rally had a lot of good traction with it. And before the rally took place, we had a lot of people talking about it. We had a lot of people reacting to it. Uh, I worked the hell out the union officials, Claren Coverton and uh, Roger Love, because every day that I put it up, when I put it up every day on the union board, which is the members board, the people that's supposed to protect our interests and be part of our interest was take it down every day. So that was interesting to watch, to have them take down something that the members had an issue with. And then they will turn around at the garage and say they support the issue of yeah. having a portal party. So that was very interesting. And after the rally took place, we had traction from that issue, which was, the, 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 the change out of the bathrooms. But the thing about the change out, it's a temporary uh, solution from the rally. We have to get a permanent solution because once the winter time comes right. and it's 10 below zero, all them, all them waterworks won't work. That they, you know, they made the bigger bathroom, uh, more room, they put the, made it where you get the water, uh, where you can wash your hands with water, but once the winter time come, you know, CTA need to take them $2 billion and build a brick and mortar bathroom at some of these end of the lines for these operators. So that's my take on it. I think we need to uh, focus on, continue to do another one, you know, whenever we get around to it. Uh, because And uh, we need to press the CTA. We can't let them just get off of this. We that's right. Press and then, and continue we're the video here. And, from hold, the and hold a union accountable. For, for not uh, doing what we're doing. That's right. That's right. And, and they and you know what? As long as they don't do it, we'll do it. And if they don't get religion and wake up, uh, you know, they're gonna be overthrown. You know. Um, and and look look at that sign. You know, is that that full time jobs? That's was one of the signs Sister Cheryl uh, uh, donated to us. So we we always want to give credit. We got. Uh, everyone making all these different kind of signs, showing creativity, um, and 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 they care about each other. Um, I also had every single day the flyers promoting this event were torn down by the management at Midway Shop. It was just pathetic. Uh, Midway Terminal too. I've been working there for a while. You know, I couldn't catch them 
So, but ne- but whenever I do, I ask people, hey, let me know if you see a manager do this because we got to put f- labor charges on these people. It's you you taking down a flyer that supports our issues and then uh, uh, it's in a break room, it's legally protected. I mean, that, that's wrong, but we didn't give up, you know, we just kept putting up our flyers, you know, just kept putting them up every day. They took it down, we put them up, we'll take them down, put them up. Uh, go ahead, Kathy. Well, I just wanted to say the little story Andre told about the passengers taking the flyers off of his bus. That's a great story. We should put that in the next flyer or the next article because that's that's uh, kind of exciting. <laughs> I don't know if I want to say that, though. I don't want Andre getting any more right up. Oh, oh. <laughs> well, we won't say his name. <laughs> we'll say. Uh, it's OK. You can say my name. No, we're yeah. not going to say your name. <laughs> Not until you retire. Okay, uh, Robert. Dude, I'm so I'm so happy that, that oh. I actually put my uh, my name on that article because because uh, Freedom Roll they'll be like, do you want this to be with your name on it or do you want want us to just say staff? And I'm like, no, nah, put my name on it, man. I just I hope this gets back to Keith. I really well, really it, want this it, to get back. It's gonna to get back Keith, to Keith. I want, him to, I want him to see my name on that. We yeah. we gonna Eric Eric. I made 200 copies and I'm I. I am just in the midst of passing them out. So me and Kathy, we're going to pick some days. We're going to go to 77, 74th, and just give them to the operators, give them to the managers. Like last time, they came out. What are y'all passing out? We gave them one. They took it back in the office. So, yeah, you ain't got to worry about it. It's going to get back to Keith. <laughs> bro, bro, text me when you're going to do that, and I'll come help you do that. I mean, I can't, oh, okay. I can't come on CTA property or anything like that, you know, but if you guys want to be, like, at the gate or whatever, I will show. I'll drive down there, and I'll help you get those out. Matter of fact, I'll make some more copies. Well, you could be on public way. You could be like 50 feet from us. So you know, uh, you'd be good. Okay. All right. Yeah. That's hey, listen, brother, let good. me know. Let All me right. know and I'll, I'll show up whenever. Okay. Okay. That'll work. All right. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, we got another hand. Uh, Robert, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, I did my best to promote the, <laughs> uh, the event. Um, I lit up the whole park a lot the night before. Every car that was in the parking lot on both sides of the building, I lit up with a sign. I put it on the car. So um, I did my best. And then in the weeks leading to the event, uh, you know, when I was off or, or, or uh, on lunch or whatever, I would give, give the flyers out. So, um, yeah, that was great. Awesome. And thanks. Thanks again, Robert. You are uh, an angel. Uh, so, yeah, I covered everyone who is online here. Um, some other interesting things that I want to share about this are some statistics, okay? Everyone wants to know it's good when you assess what you do, if you can get data on, on, on what, uh, specifically, how many people were involved or engaged. So just our particular... Uh, uh, on, on this particular post where I, I aggregated everything, uh, all of our videos and photos um, on um, March 31st, the, 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 I'm sorry, here we go, April 2nd. So we got a nice, we were really heavily promoting the event on the 31st and uh, we got a lot of traffic on the uh, Justice Coalition Facebook page uh, on the 2nd. And, um, and you see it kind of goes down naturally. Another analytics I wanted to show you is um, the, uh, the website. So um, that's loading up. So on the uh, second, uh, let's see, seven days. Let me just go back a little bit more. All right, so here we go with uh, April, March 31st, April 2nd. So you see, we started getting a bump up in our, our website, you know, some, some attention, more attention. So that's a good thing. So it's always good to, to look at this thing. Uh, we had interesting... Lee, and I didn't put it in here, I just forgot, I guess. And that is uh, Black Club uh, Chicago reached out to us 
and they did some their black club chicago is part of wbez chicago public radio 91.5 now um and they uh, spoke with some of us uh, they reached out to some of us and we uh sh shared information with them about our working conditions at cta and they uh they actually quoted uh played some video on or played some audio from our video on the radio and they were doing that um on the sixth or the seventh and uh they are now reaching out and they actually want to interview uh, us about working conditions so i wanted to talk about that right now while we're in this meeting um uh should we do it should we should we go along with them uh it, you know media can be an ally but they can also uh be uh, uh uh not a good ally at all they can be an enemy uh here is the um email so read that for yourself uh what do you think they're and then uh, let's talk about it. So I'll leave that on screen. Go ahead, Andre. Well, me, me, me personally, I think that we need to focus on our members that's not part of the Justice Coalition to get them to get involved and get engaged, to get them informed, to get them to talk to each other. You know, I don't have no problem with the show, but it's not like, you know, they, it's not like the show out of it is the members. So it's not that crew. It's not that critical to me, you know, to be on the show. Unless the members is invited to listen to the show with that take another effort to let them know we own the show. But I think the members is most important right now because, you know, we we still low on the tank and we need to build that up. We need to get them to start understanding their rights to start understanding that they need to be involved, to start yeah. to, to participate, uh, participate in the union meetings. So it don't bother me if anybody go, but it's not that crucial to me to go to a radio show. Uh, okay. So you see what I what I have on screen. It, it, so you're not, I mean, you, you don't think we, sh we should bother, we should indulge them? Not, re I'm not really. Okay. You know. So I'm gonna put you down for a me. no. I'm gonna put you down for a no. Okay. Okay. All right, uh, they, Robert. They put me down for the no, but also put me down for what I'm saying. In other words, no, we should be dealing with the members more. How about yeah. that no? <laughs> well, I'm gonna say no. So I'm putting okay. no and no. So we got more people. Go ahead, Rob, uh, Robert. Yeah, I, I absolutely think that uh, we should do this, Eric. I think you and an old timer, um, should be on the TV show. Um, this will do two things. This will let the CTA and the union officials know that, yes, we can read. Yes, we do know our rights, what we can do. And um, people are starting to wake up. Um, and CTA, you can't pull your crap anymore. And um, you know, the union officials, they say all this crap about we live a lavish lifestyle and you should be glad to have a job. Well, we are glad we have a job. We're glad to provide a service, but we don't want to be treated like crap. And um, I think this will be uh, a good uh, move for us to let the public know what's really, really going on at CTA because the Tribune and the Sun-Times are not going to cover it. So if we got this local uh, this local news company that wants to cover cover our real issues, then go for it. Okay. Thank you, uh, Robert. Is it okay? So, uh, uh, Kathy, go ahead. Yeah, I think that um, it could be good for momentum for for our work, but I also agree with Andre that that. Uh, the main thing is we want to organize the members. We want to talk to the members, not the news. And as a matter of fact, that could be some, I don't know if that's something you want to say. If you do the interview, if that's some, if there's a way to say that, I think. But anyway, yeah, I think it could be good for momentum. But just to keep in mind, you know, we're not like Deborah Cozy Lane or 
what's his name, Ken Franklin, you know, trying to get publicity. That's not really what we're about. But nonetheless. Yes. You know, that's Thank it. you. So I put you down as a yes. Um, yeah. How about you, Eric? Uh, or no, Tom. Tom. Uh, I, I'm in the middle with it. <laughs> I think you should, but then I don't know if you'll get retributions from it. Because, you know, CTA don't want you talking to the press unless it's on their behalf. Mm -hmm. So I, if I had to vote, I would say no, just so nobody gets retributions. Okay. Uh, unless you're going to get somebody like a retiree and a a uh, former employee or something where they can't retaliate against them. Yeah, 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 yeah. I I uh, I hear you. Um, go ahead, Andre. Uh, I like uh, files with Tom. What Tom said, Tom, show me where you. You have to show me that because you know I don't. I don't believe. I don't understand that one where you say. You can't talk to the media. I don't, you had to show me that one because I talked to the media <laughs> and I was in full uniform and I was being taped by Keith Hill. So, and he tried to get me fired behind that and he couldn't do it. So, you know, I don't, I don't, jail I don't know if it's in writing or not, but I know they retaliate against you. Yeah, he tried to retaliate, but that's just him. Mm -hmm. he, he don't, he tried and it didn't work out. I, you know, the news yeah, asked you a question and I answered the question and I knew how to answer the question. Uh, I didn't put myself in jeopardy or anything violate any rules as I spoke. And I put it back on the union when they was talking about striking. So that was something yeah. I say, yeah, I speak with the union about. You so, did, that's true. And I was in full uniform. So that's it. Uh, I kind of like what Robert said. Uh, so I'm I, like I say I'm gonna be in the middle with I'm gonna go back into the middle, uh, but uh, I don't have no problem. Like I said, it, my no was I still don't have no problem with doing it or a member doing it. But you know what's important is we do what we have to do with these members. So that's why I'm gonna stay on that one. Thank you, uh, Eric Strzok. <laughs> Yeah, so um, Eric, where are you at, man? Because this is really sunny. You in Florida or something? <laughs> I'm right in front of my house, bro. I'm up here in Skokie. Um, oh, okay. but, um, I need to ride up to Skokie, yeah. man. You got all that sun. And <laughs> man, as soon as I hang up thing? here, I'm pulling one of the motorcycles out. Man. But uh, okay. but I, I want to actually, I want to agree with Brother Andre that, that we should at, at all times keep the focus on organizing the membership because that's, that's, that's the reason why we exist, right? But the thing is, though, is if a opportunity like this presents itself to get our story out to the media we should absolutely jump on it you know and uh, if they try to do anything to us about that that's uh they're interfering in protected union activity because we're a caucus in 241 and 308 so i have a specific lawyer you can talk to about uh about uh retaliation for uh protected union activity so they can't come at us for this you know what i mean um anyway uh the, the other thing though is if we do if we do go on TV man we got to have we got to have the um, the website URL for uh, Justice Coalition displayed prominently because if they chop up what we're saying and it comes on TV where we're not really getting our message out at least we have that uh, website URL over there to um, so people can actually check us out and, and see and see what we're about like in print you know what I mean so if we got to get if we could like write it on a hat, or get a t-shirt printed up or something with that so so that they can't so that we can we, we so we can't get censored you know what i'm saying so I, i'm absolutely for it i think people should be for it cool cool um i'm wearing tom uh tom put this together for us uh can't see my screen for some reason i don't know if y'all can see it but eh, y'all see that chicago transit justice coalition um so you're for it. So we got three no's and three yeses. <laughs> it's not good. We need to break that. Does anyone want to take their vote away and change it? 
I'll, I'll change it to yes. Okay. Because it's an opportunity, like I, like uh, uh, Eric Strutch said and Robert said. So I'm going to go with they. I like what they said. Okay. Okay. That's cool. That's cool. Um, all righty. And uh, so that's what we're going to do. So some, some things I wanted to bring up is, so I'll respond to her on behalf of the Justice Coalition because that's the Justice Coalition email. Uh, there's some things, there's some conditions. So we will do this on some conditions then. And the conditions are we need the website URL on display. There has to be at least two of us present. Anything else? Uh, Tom, go ahead. From what I'm reading, it says they want to know about the attacks on the passengers, correct? Sorry, let me uh, put that back up for you. Um, here it is. I'm reaching out because we are covering CTA attacks on one of our episodes. Yeah, we really can't cover that. I mean, we can speak on our issues of safety and things that I think they want us to talk on specific attacks and what the CTA is doing. And like, in other words, they want to look at us as we're the CTA dealing with the attacks. I don't think they want to care about the working issues, but we can we can we can speak and talk about how we're not being protected and how these tax formulated because of the lack of protection. But we can't speak on behalf of the CTA because we don't know what they're doing. You know, I don't know if they want to know that. Right. But we gonna speak yeah. as workers. Well, like like Eric Strzok said, then they'll edit everything out. That's why. I I don't think we should do it right now until you tell this producer that you want to speak on internal, you know what I'm saying? Okay. As workers. So how about this? Um, we stuck with a certain line in our speeches or, or my speech that I did at the protest and I can just stick with that. <laughs> And then whatever they say, because when they did talk to me, I'm like, well, I can't, you know, I can't speak on behalf of our employer or ATU. You know, right. all I can say is that we're dying out here, literally. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's a good, that's, and, that's and the poverty. Angle we, that's and the angle poverty is the cause of crime. I, I could stay on the issues of poverty is the cause of crime. You want to fix crime, you eliminate poverty. And the lack of uh, adequate security. Uh, it's causing criminals to be comfortable. So, Kathy, what about that? Well, adequate security, what is that? Police? The police? No, are no. no. Uh, uh, well, uh, visibility, I, well, put it like that. Vis what? Adequate, adequate visibility of, of, of us, you know, two person crews, uh, more people, more workers, uniform workers uh, together. Uh, yeah cameras and uh, things of that nature. We yeah, two, two person crews, that's good. And I, I, I think we probably don't have agreement in the group about more police or more security guards or more dogs. Those dogs, I've seen them set the dogs on drunk old men and homeless people. So I love dogs, but uh, I don't wanna see the dogs on the train. It's, 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 it's a, it's a big mess, uh, the security. The police do not stop crime, but a lot of people want the police. So it, it's, it's an issue we probably need to talk about some more. Well, this is a great time to do that too. Um, uh, so, you know, staying on these certain issues is, is key. And, you know, security, uh, quote unquote, security and policing uh, is not a sustainable solution. It is an immediate solution for sure. Uh, it's true. It, it does have an immediate effect, but uh, it can also have complete disastrous effect. Um, and in the long term, it's it does it's not helpful because the problem still exists. Uh, go ahead, Tom. The problem is. The CTA has all of these 
rules and regulations for these customers that they do not enforce. They do not, they tell you no fair dispute mm -hmm. uh, with the mask. You cannot request them to put no mask on it or they want to spit at you and holler at you. Mm -hmm. See, the CTA does not enforce their own policies with the public. And that's the problem. If people knew that they were going to get a ticket or whatever for breaking the rules, maybe that would stop it a little bit. Maybe, um, maybe, and 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 you know, democratically, the the members of the unions have to have to debate and decide. Uh, we in the Justice Coalition can focus on uh, uh, ideals and 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 goals uh, and try to bring people into that, um, but ultimately, it's going to be the uh, majority uh, well, side. And yeah, you go up to Jefferson Park terminal there's a brand new terminal there mm -hmm. and um bus waiting areas with glass and everything for since they opened it up the homeless were sleeping in there uh <laughs> doing their business in there <laughs> and now what cta has done to solve the problem is they boarded the shelters up and the shelter had heat lamps for the passengers now they got all the passengers standing out in the cold Instead of, instead of having these people removed and charges pressed for mm. trespassing, no, they just bought it up. And now everybody's standing out there in the elements. So Tom, um, yeah, that's really pathetic. But what, a lot of these people that are removed, they don't have any money, you know, and they're already got records. What is finding them? Is that really gonna, solve it well i mean how do you how do you take care of the situation like that when they know they can do what they want and have no repercussions to what they've done because i i witness it every day people's hollering and spitting at bus drivers and threatening them and then they walk away and nothing's done and then they're back the next day doing the same thing and in some cases, they're fined and they're jailed and they come back and keep doing it, you know, and they get worse. What, what, uh, uh, Robert, I mean, or they, they, they got this security company that ain't doing shit there. Yeah. Robert, uh, and then Kathy. Yeah, I was just going to say, uh, basically what I put in the chat, um, you know, a couple years about. I think two or three years ago, they gave us this re, revamp, re reissued rules of conduct, and it's a joke. I wrote a I wrote an email to CTA one time to let them know about people openly smoking at the uh, Loop Link stations, and they wrote me back and told me, "Oh, we don't own those. You have to reach out to the Chicago Department of Transportation for those uh, Loop Link stations," um, but. Those people, it's, it's signs everywhere on those stations that say no smoking, but people just do it openly. And uh, I think it's disgusting for people to be out there smoking next to kids, next to elderly people. Um, you know, they need to have enforcement. And they do it at the 95th Red Line all the time, too. I have seen the police um, write, write, write a couple tickets for people smoking, but I think they probably need to um make the signs bigger or something they have the signs like every other pole or whatnot but they're very small so uh maybe they need to make the signs bigger or or have some use some of those darn advertisements that's inside the station to promote the rules of conduct instead of these other companies maybe that's just in my opinion thank you uh, uh kathy and then tom yeah uh, well it's 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 awful the conditions that have developed in Chicago and, and in this whole country, as far as homeless people and mentally ill people and drug addicted people and alcoholics, and it's just gonna get worse. It's not gonna get better because the government is not gonna put money into taking care of vulnerable people who don't have money, who don't have their wits about them, who, you know, 
it, they're not going to take care of them. And I, I think the only thing that's going to make a difference, it may be in the short term, is if enough people would demand and fight to get the mayor to reopen the mental health clinics, to reopen some shelters for people, to fix up some of these uh, abandoned buildings. People need jobs. The streets are falling apart. Fix up some of that stuff. Hire people at good jobs. But that's going to be a huge fight. And, you know, it's going to be hard to win people to do it. But I, I just don't see any other choice. And the other thing I was going to say about the homeless and the mentally ill, okay, the last time I worked with the public for the CTA was in the 80s as a conductor. And it was bad then. And it's probably 10 times worse now. But uh, I kind of lost my train. I thought, oh, it was, if we don't fight for people who don't have houses, who don't have jobs to be taken care of, then, then who's going to do it? I mean, I'm, it, it shouldn't just be CTA people making the fight, but it should be everybody else, all of us together. But we're taught to kind of ignore it, accept yeah. it. It's okay, but it's really not okay. And I'll say one more thing. I'm not a religious person at all, but you got all these religious people on these uh, union pages talking about homeless people like, like they're less than human. They're still human beings. It, it's a horrible situation. And I'm glad I, I don't have to ride the train or the bus. I mean, there's plenty of crazy people running around here where I live, you know, so it's, yep. it's just rough. Thank you. Uh, Tom, go ahead. <clears throat> Let me get on stack for a minute since time's done. Go ahead, Eric. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I think that uh, I really, in, in terms of the cause of all this, I really strongly agree with uh, with you and uh, Sister Catherine about uh, where this is all coming from. You know what I mean? There's, uh, it's obvious that there's plenty of money around to fix the problem. You know what I mean? Because, you know, how much money did they spend on Millennium Park? CTA just got $2 billion, you know, so they, they can solve this if they want, but they're just not going to do it because there's no money in solving it. There's not, no money to be made in solving it, right? So that's, that's a problem that's just endemic to the system, you know what I mean? And they, they, far from solving it, they've made it worse. They shut down all the mental health facilities under the daily regime, so that put all, all these... Uh, people with mental health issues out in the streets. They're not doing anything. There's like the, the war in Afghanistan, put a, a heroin pipeline into the West side. You know what I mean? And so mm. there's, there's, there's dope fiends, wine heads. You can't go anywhere to get any type of treatment. You know what I mean? So these are all the people that just end up out on the street. You know what I mean? And, and, you know, they're not our enemies. You know what I mean? And, and it's just people, people kind of flip things upside down, man, because, because every year, see, they, they, they see, homeless people as being dangerous, right? That, oh, you know, they might rape you or they might rob you or, you know, whatever this, that kind of shit, you know? But the thing is though, is that that really flips reality on its head because pe people think that the, more policing is, is, is the uh, solution to it. Cops on the average kill between 1,500 to 1,200 people per year. They're the ones that are dangerous. They're not gonna solve this situation. They might kill some of these homeless people. You know what I mean? So, you know, we, we have reality flipped on its head. You know what I mean? And, and, and it's sad to say, man, but in the position where we, we, we can't do very much about this aside from not be abusive towards people that don't have place, places to stay. And, and, and we as a group can take an official, like in a, a position on this. But, you know, it's, uh, you know, there's, there are, and, and I'll bring this to a close in a second. There are people doing stuff about this though. There's, uh, there's this group called the Chicago Anti-Eviction Campaign. It's this guy, um, Willie J.R. Fleming and uh, Toussaint Lossier that are, uh, what they're doing is they, they, uh, they find lists of bank owned properties in neighborhoods like Auburn, Gresham or Inglewood or whatever. And, um, you know, the uh, banks are just, uh, Waiting, holding onto those properties for their for their value, and um, meanwhile, dope fiends are breaking in, stealing copper piping, and 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 like the houses go to go to shit and everything. So what what they do is they work out a deal with the bank, where they will get homeless people who hang out in the neighborhood that don't have substance abuse issues or mental health issues, 
and they will break into the house, change the locks, help fix the help fix the house up a little bit, you know, and let those people live there. And then they go to the bank and they're like, we got somebody in your property at this address. This person is at that property, you know, 12, 15 hours a day. And they are there. The doors have locks. Your property is not going to get robbed or degraded anyway. Why don't you just let this person stay there? You know what I mean? So there's, there's people that are working on solving this, right? But the thing is, though, is that homeless people are not the enemy. They're not the problem. The problem is social situations they've been forced into, you know, uh, via the, the 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 design uh, via the design flaws of this whole system you know what i'm saying so sorry to run long but thank you eric thank you um and and that's generally what yeah i totally agree <laughs> uh, so so I, if if we get in there it looks like andre's interested and he may depending on uh what time these uh this wciu wants so it looks like there's Andre is open to doing it, uh, and and I am as long as it's it's not me by myself. Um, you know, we should we should do things in pairs at least. <laughs> so I may uh, put that as a condition that two or more have to be present. I will write that in there, um, and that we are we are focused on elimination of poverty, uh, of poverty. Um, that is a big deal uh to us is that is y'all okay with that or not yeah i'm fine with it okay okay good so um let's move on just uh so the next hour of power yeah there's gonna be one uh people voted it's gonna be midway orange line midway terminal southwest side but when then, uh we have to decide a date oh okay i'm I'm kind of stuck because I'm right in the middle of a pick. I, I pick uh, my schedule Thursday. It looks like I won't get forced somewhere. So I'll, I'll be able to do my, I may not be qualified in what I'm qualifying for at the time by the deadline. Yeah. So I may be able to pick a schedule and stick with it. And of course, then I can say, hey, I can commit to the hour of power at such and such day. And I definitely want to be there. I don't want to miss the next hour of power. So what issue is going to be on the, on the plate? Well, it's up to us. It's up to the coalition, right? Yeah, talk to members and yeah. see what they do. It, it's, it's, like, it's like what we were talking about earlier, right? And that is we have to talk to our coworkers. What's bothering you? <laughs> and, and what are you willing to do about it? You know, and then say, well, let's protest. Let's, let's do something, you know, and... Uh, so let's keep talking to our coworkers according to these these organizing lessons, and um, and let's figure out what they want, right? Um, so what about a sexual harassment action? Um, Kathy brought up, uh, you know, we we should organize some kind of action. We don't, Kathy, you're the only uh, uh, female that is on the call right now. Um, so it's it's I guess we just got to kind of keep talking about this. Uh, we need to get we need to get some we need to get some uh, we need to do something, you know. Yeah, uh, the woman who posted uh, about her being about being harassed by Tamika. Uh, Tamika. 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 Um, you know. Go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. I was saying it should be at the office where the where the predator is at. <laughs> the union office. As as far as with Tamika's post, she was harassed by sexually harassed by Woodrow. She let mm -hmm. let him fill it down at that office. Yeah, what does she think about that? I wonder. What does she think about it? Oh he yeah, about, about about having some kind of a uh you know public display of Discuss. We, we have to talk. To, we have to. We have to talk. We have to discuss right. these things with her. You, okay. and Nicole, can reach out to her, and you can reach out to her. Y'all can have a powwow, and we'll okay. be the supported, supportive anchor. Okay. Yeah, we do need to talk to her. And and Nicole was had some kind of harassment. I mean, I don't think it was like sexual harassment, but it was criminal, criminal, criminal. Uh, uh it was criminal. Uh, Aggravated criminal, uh, it was a criminal assault, like that. Okay, yeah, because by Keith Hill, 
Right. He wouldn't have done that shit if she was a man. I doubt no, he it. He wouldn't have. He wouldn't have. And the CTA did what they do. No, they no, he, he did it to me. He did it to but me. It was proof, he but it was proof. He, he threatened me. He sure but, did. And, he, yeah. and the CTA covered it up once again with Eric. You know what I'm saying? Yep. They 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 on his side, but it did it did happen. Yep. And it's on video for Eric. <laughs> what? Yeah, Keith Hill is just horrible. That's that he threat threatens people and to kick their ass, and and he did that to Eric. Eric's like, man, what is this? Uh, you can't do that, and this and that. Let me have my newsletter, and then and then he calls the the manager and has Eric suspended, man. You know, and then he won't honor Eric's grievance when he was unjustly fired because he was right. injured. I mean, give me a break, you fire a man. Uh, get out of here, you know. But Eric, you you'll update us on 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 that at another time, I'm sure. Yeah. Hey, l- listen. Let me let me just say real quick. Um, in terms of uh, sexual harassment of uh, of uh, our sisters, our union sisters, uh, that's absolutely something we got to take up, man. Because uh, I used to I used to hear that every day from women that I worked with at Chicago Garage. The amount of shit that they had to take on the uh, on the uh, on the buses, and that's what that what that's what drives a lot of women to uh, quit their position as bus operators is there's like sustained harassment all the time on the streets. You know what I mean? And uh, that's another thing that two person crews can take care of so that that can go in, uh, you know, um, strengthen our demand around that. But um, I got a dip, but, uh, but brother Andre, please let me know when you're going to do this flyer distribution, I'll print up more, more flyers and we can okay. go to whatever location that you want. Yeah. And we want- uh just uh, text me and let me know, and uh, we'll get a plan together. Okay. Okay, got you. All right. Good to see all you, all you, and uh, these meetings are awesome, man. Uh, I don't know if I could operate on uh, Brother Eric's level to bring this sort of stuff together, but I'm sure glad that he's doing it. But anyway, I will uh, talk to all you sisters and brothers later. All right. All right. Thank Bye. you. Bye, bye, Eric. Thank you, uh, Tom. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, I like the midway idea. Because you have 308, 241 Pace, and CTA on the property over there. So I could try to reach out to some of the Pace people and see what their issues are over there. Perfect. Please do. And um, put it in the WhatsApp chat, what you find. And that way, others uh, will put, and I can try to gather all that information there. We can also, uh, we'll also post to the uh, Justice Coalition group and try to get people uh, in the group to put in ideas. Go ahead, Robert. I was gonna say that would be great, uh, Tom, to get Pace, because I noticed at the 241 meetings there, I never see anybody from Pace at the 241 meetings. And- um, No, if- they, tell, they tell me they, they feel they're not a part of 241. Oh, CTA runs it. You know, they're like the stepchildren and right. their own executive board. He don't even speak up for them. Yeah, that's tragic. Uh, so maybe we need to uh, step up our uh, engagement with, with our Pace brothers and sisters. because they've, uh, got, they've got three different locations. Uh, Bridgeview, Melrose Park, and... Uh, I think is Evanston or Skokie up there. Andre might know a little more. And then there's that uh, first transit. But all these other four companies, they feel like the stepchildren because we're the majority CTA. Well, we definitely got to get involved with them because they could help us um, get rid of this administration with the next election. We got to make sure that, you know, if they feel like they're not involved or they're not cared for, then they need to vote out this administration and bring in some people that that will keep pace at the table. Well, I, I blame their executive board because he's worthless. He just sits there and goes with the flow. Yeah, they all do. Yeah. Um, let's um is it can I can I move on to the next topic or? You still, y'all had something else. No, that's it. Okay. So uh, we got uh, Labor Notes is having some pretty cool webinars. Uh, 
organizer webinars. So this one passed, this was April 4th, but um, they have some other, you still might be able to get in. Um, we also have labor notes uh, 2022. So make sure uh, organizers, uh, those of you who attend, please, uh, Tom, uh, it's got these, uh, got a good connection for these very nice polo shirts we can wear. And uh, go ahead, Tom. Yeah, I was gonna say, uh, I've registered already and I think Nicole did too. Yes, me too, me too. And I registered uh, another organizer who needed assistance. So we'll, it looks like we'll have at least four of us. That'll be cool. Um, all right, and as usual, we uh, promote making our own contract as workers, the workers contract, it's always in progress. We have a, uh, we have a, we have a local 308 uh, membership meeting coming up Tuesday, this Tuesday, please attend it, it's at 630. If you're in 241, come on down, you have uh, visiting privileges. Uh, we have a candidate forum, uh, don't have much, uh, I don't think we have anything new on there yet. Yeah, we still got the same old responses. Please try to send people um, to who are interested or just try to get people interested in running for office. We need to fill every spot at 241. We have a little 33% uh, stickers. Uh, you can go um, to that link that's on the agenda. Got these cool little stickers uh, to wear. Uh, looks like the bowling thing ain't going to happen. Um, and uh, we need some articles for our newsletter. I was doing everything and I can't do everything all the time. So please submit just a short few paragraphs. Uh, and there was something else here that I guess I didn't type in, but we have a, a not-for-profit. We're working on making the Justice Coalition a real uh, not for profit organization. Okay. So, uh, uh, brother Robert's been in working on that. Um, Tom, go ahead. Yeah. I don't know if this is the right time to bring this up. Uh, but now that the weather is getting nicer, did, did you ever consider having like a little picnic somewhere to get people out? Not me, but it he, he, sounds like you have. So well, no, I'm just saying to we get should make it happen, right? Mingle, you know. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if people would be interested in that just to get together and. Okay, Justice Coalition barbecue. Maybe we'll do a survey or something. Yeah, so something we... like that. Okay, 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 cool. Seeing as how uh, the bowling thing is done with now. Yeah, I guess so. That was kind of fun. Well, maybe we'll do it again, pick it up later. Um, okay, so as far as not-for-profit uh, 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 status, what we, we, we're, we're trying to move along with this. Uh, Robert, I, we left off at, uh, you go ahead. I was gonna say, um, so I think the first step is we gotta get the poll out on Facebook to see who, who would, uh, the nominations, who would be, the director, the, the, the director, the treasurer, the whatever. I think how many offices do we have to have on the paperwork? I think it was at least three, right? Yeah. All right. So we need at least three people that want to put their name on some paperwork that says they're associated with our organization. So um, I don't have a problem putting my name on there. Um, and then we got to decide uh after that, we got to do the voting, I guess. And then um, we had came up with uh, $15. We want to make it reasonable for everybody. Um, so we came up with $15 membership fee per year. Um, does anybody have any objections to that? Um, I think we ought to have um, $5 per year for people in part-time jobs. Okay. Anybody else? Go ahead, Tom. Uh, is there a certain minimum we would have to have of members or anything? 
I don't think so. No, we're just the organization. Yeah. Does that what did you find anything about a minimum, uh, Robert? I didn't recall seeing that. No, for for to foul. Yeah. No, I think it was just at least you had to have at least three, three individuals. Um, so, I mean, you know, Eric would be one, then maybe Andre could be one, then I could be one. Or yeah, whoever, yeah. whoever votes, we're going to have a poll, I guess, to um, nominate people. Yeah. Okay. Can you, Robert, can you, uh, can, 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 what do you, let's do this now. Uh, let, let's, let's look at maybe five directors. That way we kind of have, mm, you know, a little more accountability, I think. Uh, so what we could have a director, we, we, should we call it president and treasurer or how do we do this everybody? What do y'all think? Uh, can I ask a question? Go ahead. What are, what is your organization, uh, labor union or what? No, no, this is not a labor union. Cause I, I noticed on the Facebook page, use our classified as a labor union, I believe. Yeah, they have categories. So we're labor union as in a category, but it's not a labor union. So, I mean, what kind of an organization are we classified as for? The yeah, Facebook. LLC, I, be, I believe it's called, you said? Yeah, it's a, it's a it's a caucus. Okay. So it's, but it's, but technically that what you see on Facebook, those are their, their classifications. As far as, uh, well, as you far know, as I, legality you know, I, I goes, met. Robert, Robert, you're going to have to try to find out what we are classified. Are we a community organization? Are we a employment organization? Are we, I don't know. Well, you know, you know what I'm trying to go towards there with, they're trying to say do unionism. Yeah, so, yeah, they're, they, yeah, know we yeah. can't be classified as a union. No, no, yeah, we're not. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and yeah, I, I don't know, Robert. Is that an issue uh, in the filing? I don't remember. No, we already said that we wasn't going to be uh, filing as a labor union. We was going to pick one of the categories. I think it was a uh, civic. I think civic was the one that we said we was going to go with or yeah. civic or community was one of the uh, yeah. choices that we were going to go with for our organization. Yeah. 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 That's it. Cause That's somebody, it. On, somebody earlier mentioned we are a caucus. Yep. But, but I don't think we'll be a legally recognized caucus from the ATU. You know what I'm saying? That No, we're not. Never will be. So, I don't I don't want no trouble from them saying, oh, use our dual unionism and all that nonsense, you know. Yeah. Well, you're gonna get it. You we're all charged well, yeah. with it. They're coming after us for sure. They're coming after us with charges for dual unionism, but it's not gonna we're not. We're not a union. <laughs> I mean, well, there's not there's no evidence. That's the question I'm saying. I'm gonna use classified as <laughs> you're a civic organization. As, as a, a nonprofit. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we're a civic organization. You know, legally, we're a civic organization. We're not a labor union. I mean, it's just, I, I you know what, Tom? They're going to come after us. They're going to keep saying it and saying it. It's just like, you just got to tell them the truth. Well, I know that, but, yeah. you know, it, they're going to try to eliminate us from being able to run for anything eventually well is, yeah it's you know because they're I, gonna I, bring they're gonna bring us up on charges and yeah when yeah. the election comes around we're still gonna be uh under investigations and, yeah you know they're, they're yeah. gonna use it to their advantage if they can of course but, of course and and i expect that i don't think any of us who run frankly will win because they to let any justice coalition slate person win would be i mean the mayor would maybe even the governor would be very displeased you know so they to you they'll do everything um 
Well, we have to get endorsed by uh, Deborah Lane then, because she's right. good friends with them. We need Deborah Lane, lady of many hats. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, Robert, how about this? And everybody, we're gonna we're gonna make a poll. We're gonna try to make some kind of poll for president, treasurer, director, director, and director. What do y'all think? President, vice president, director, director. How do you, how do y'all want this? We need five. Well, you bet. I will see how many people want to join up first before you go making number decisions like that. Five. What if you only get? What if there's only six people drawing up at first? Well, then it's just us. Then you know, I. You know. I mean, I think I think it's good to just make a good foundation, and then if it flops, it flops. You know, I I don't expect a lot of people to do it, but what we're trying to do is we're trying to lay it, lay a foundation because then they'll eventually do it. You know, it's well, it's all going to take know, time. Up in my garage, you have a lot of support up there. They just kind of scared. Yeah. Oh, I agree. Yeah, totally. Same here. Everywhere I go, they're scared. You're scared for sure. But we still got to move forward. I think what Robert's doing here is he's pushing us to another level and it's time for us to just go with it. <laughs> um, I think it's a good idea. So, we'll okay. You guys. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, uh, that about wraps it up. Um, I think, is there any more comments or questions? Okay, uh, so I got some tasks, Robert, and Robert, I'll be working with you on this poll. We're going to draft this poll, and um, we're going to, we got a Justice Coalition barbecue uh, poll. I'll be working with you on, Tom, and um, and I have to, there was something else we were going to work on, uh, but Andre's not on the call, so, and if we got so much on our plate, we'll just have to deal with it next week, and that is a resign now campaign um talking to the uh mayor the cta board of directors and the union leadership we can we can work on that uh next meeting next meeting will be on the 24th uh, maybe nicole is going to run it um or any of y'all can run it that would be great and i've actually got all the everything you need so any anything else and then we're going to sign off Okay, that'd be it. We have a report on the local 241 uh, meeting. Uh, it's, it's on YouTube and uh, we'll be uh, sharing that and I'll be sharing this very soon. Thanks a lot, everybody. Good night. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye now. Take care. Thank you.